AC and DC motors part 4. Induction motor starters. Today my plan is to explain about various type of starters where we used in AC induction motors. First of all, we'll see why do we need a starter. Okay, uh, actually starter we need to limit the starting current, which means normally induction motor it consumes a very high current. Its maximum drying current uh, is when it is starting. That is the time period where it draws the maximum current because that is the time the slip frequency is maximum, which means the rotating magnetic field of the stator and the rotor is apparently stopped at that particular moment. So the slip frequency or uh, flux cutting rate is maximum. So the induction in the rotor is maximum. So it draws a tremendous amount of current. So we have to limit this current. Uh, so to limit the current, we need to start. Then the second one to reduce the system voltage dip. Of course, if you connect this motor, if it is a large motor and if you are connected to the bus power, just depending on the size of the motor and its power factor, Whenever it's starting, that time it draws a huge current, which means uh, it draws too much current and it will cause to reduce the voltage or we call it as a voltage dip in your system. So to minimize or to reduce the voltage dip that you can use to reduce the current and then you can use a start. The third point is to reduce mechanical stresses. Of course, if the motor is coupled to a load and if it starts to draw its maximum current and the torque will be, the starting torque will be highest as possible and it will give some uh, mechanical stress or overload on the load which is connected, maybe a pump, maybe a winch, maybe some other drive, drive, mechanical drive, uh, drive, driver. So to reduce the mechanical stress, to have a smooth starting up, we can use a start. Number four is to reduce thermal stresses. Of course, if motor draws current more, we know the power is equal to P is equal to I squared R. So if the current moves, uh, the, the, the current more, which means the power or heat dissipate is more. So the loss of the thermal stresses are more. So you can minimize the stresses, the thermal stresses using a motor start. The fifth one, to maintain the system power factor. Yes, during a motor start, starting a motor, its power factor is very much less. Let's see why what is happening there. In my previous video, I have explained how does a motor power factor increase with picking up its speed. Right. Anyway, so if the motor draws, uh, it's operated at low power factor, in that case, that will directly affect your system, the, the supply, electrical supply, and its power factor also uh, ultimately uh, fall down. So to maintain system power factor also, we can use a started uh, motor start. Right. Okay. Uh, do not get confused. This is not a starter motor. This is AC induction motor starting methods. Right. This is the motor torque characteristic as well as the current behavior. This is the rotor speed and this axis is the full load current. You can see the full load current is this much of small, but if this motor is directly supplied or exposed to the supply voltage, then it will draw six to seven times of full load current. It's very, very big number. So, even though it's that much current produces, the torque is small. The mechanical output is small. This is torque characteristic curve. This is the current characteristic curve. And this one is load torque demand. So, okay. Of course, the starting torque, this is the starting torque, it is greater than the load torque demand, the load will start to spin. But you see, even though it's consumed 
the highest current, the torque is not maximum. The torque is maximum at this point where the current is not that much. This reason is because of the reactance value. The reactance value at the beginning or starting of the motor is very high because flux cutting rate or slip frequency or the, the speed between the rotating magnetic field of the stator and the rotor speed are very high. They are very much differ at the starting. And as the motor is picking up its speed, so the rotor is almost come closer to the same speed as the stator. So its power factor or reactance value starting from lowest because you can see this equation. This F is the slip frequency. If the slip frequency is highest, which means at the starting, your reactance value will be very high. So that your power factor also very low. If XL is very much high, that power factor is low. The resistance of the rotor is a constant. It can, it can be considered as constant, even though in practical application there are some uh, uh, effect from the skin uh, effect and these things. Still, you can consider it as a constant. Right. So this is the basics. So what I, have, uh, I want to show you in this one, this is the starting current. You can see that is how much big and still that you have a, a low value of the starting torque even though that it draws this much of starting current. Okay, anyway, so let's see how you can minimize or reduce this current. Gentlemen, just consider a water tank and there is a tap and this tap is exposed to a turbine or spin. So, if the tank is full and if your tap is fully open, the turbine will spin at its maximum speed. So, what happens with the time? The tank level may goes down. So, what is happened? The potential energy goes down and the flow rate also will be affected and the ultimately the rotor or the turbine will start to reduce. So, it is very much clear. The water flow same like the electrical current and the tank storage capacity same like the voltage we can consider the storage the the potential uh, energy which is stored in this uh, tank so yeah, this, okay in this tank this one okay if you consider this h rho g that is like a voltage and this flow you can consider as current. Current, right? If voltage is high, then flow is more, or let's say current is more. So if you want to minimize the current, okay, in this case, you can fill the tank half. And once this, this uh, turbine starts to spin, you can increase the water level, you can pump water in and it speed will, the turbine speed will gradually increase. So the same thing you can do for the uh, electrical motor. So what you can do to reduce this current, you can reduce the voltage. So that is the best and easy uh, method to achieve the uh, reduced current. Uh, so let's see. The reduced effect of the voltage. So this is the initial graph, you can say the motor current is here and uh, with the rated voltage, this is the torque available and this is the system curve. Let's say if you reduce the voltage, then your current curve lies below than the initial one and your torque characteristic also fall. So the disadvantage, when you are going to limit the starting current, same time that your torque availability also reduce. So you further reduce the voltage, then your starting current can be further reduced, but at the same time, your torque, starting torque also will be reduced. Anyway, so now it is very much clear to minimize the current or to reduce the current, we have to uh, reduce the voltage. So there are four methods of starting if we consider. The oil starter, we call it direct online. There is nothing in between. Directly motors apply uh, through the protection device like uh, fuses, OZR and the circuit breaker. Directly power uh, the motor, we call it direct online starter. 
and the second method we call star delta starter third one is auto transformer that is special transformer we are using uh, to reduce the voltage and finally with the electronic development uh, with uh, using thigh resistors we are going to use soft starters okay there are four kind of starters today i am going to discuss so first move to direct online start the direct online start you can see the left hand side is the power circuit main supply and your circuit breaker main breaker and fuses then a magnetic contactor which controls by a control circuit which you can see from the right and thereafter there will be thermal overload protection and then it will feed the motor so this is a, a motor right? three terminal motor this control circuit normally it derives power from main circuit through a transformer normally how it uh, supply this l1 l2 you will have a step down transformer and this may be l1 or n or in case it is neutral maybe artificial uh, neutral point you have to take otherwise this is l2 or maybe this one l2 like that right uh, normally this is comes with the uh, three phase supply so artificial neutral sorry single phase su supply 220 so separate 220 supply will be taken to control circuit so that is taken from your ships 220 supply so it is in that case this won't be l2 because it will be 440 so this is 220. right let's see what is this circuit <laughs> you have uh, okay let's say now mm, that you are power up the uh, both the power circuit as well as control circuit right? in control circuit you can see if power comes to this l1 and there is a normal close emergency stop button so as it is normal contact this uh, power will pass to this point and thereafter power can go up to this point this overload relay as it is on normal open position it will not flow below and from this point there is another uh, uh, normal close contact that is also from overload this thermal overload and it is normal close so in the event if any overload situation this will be open and the motor will stop the power will uh, block and this contact will make so it's causing the indicator alarm indicator overload alarm indicator right okay in this case let's say it is healthy and it is in normal close condition the power will come to stop button as the stop button is not activated that is also normal close contact and power comes here then the power can go to the start button as well as came one contact once you press the start button then your km relay will energize which means this magnetic contactor will uh, energize as the magnetic contactor energized same time its auxiliary contact this 13 14 also will close and then the power supply will continue to flow from this direction once you press the start button and release thereafter this 13 14 auxiliary contact will act as a holding contact or latching contact and it will maintain the power to the uh, main contactor and then your motor will directly start and there will be a power light which getting the same supply from this uh, KM1 contact or the starting line it will uh, light uh, lit whenever the motor is running so this is the basic uh, idea of DOL starter there is no voltage reduction only direct power is supplied only some protections are uh, placed in the circuit right when you want to stop that you just simply press the this button so then the power will uh, cut off to the KM1 con KM contactor then this uh, latching or holding contact also will open the motor will stop so this is direct online start the main disadvantage is it's uh, taking higher current but it has a small advantage that your starting torque is high for large motors you will not be able to put DOL because it will heavily affect on your voltage deep and the power factor right 
Okay, let's move the second method of starting uh, that is star delta. So what is this star delta? Actually, the models that it should be uh, different uh, configuration. The motor has to be configured or constructed in different configuration to run in star and delta. What does it mean? Your straighter winding, you should have six terminals. Each set of windings, uh, terminal should come take and uh, come outside the, okay, let's say if this is your motor, if it has three winding, all these three terminals, U1, U2, V1, V2, W1, W2, all these six terminals should uh, bring up to your motor terminal box. Right? So this is a quite different arrangement. So then what you are going to do, you are going to connect these three coils in star configuration and then after some time, you are going to change over it to delta configuration. How we are going to do? Let's see. But first, we'll see why we need such arrangement. Okay, main thing, if you consider, okay, line to line voltage uh, of star is 400, right? And phase voltage, one phase, one single phase is subjected only 230 volts. But in case of delta, one signal, single winding will subject to 400 volts, complete volt line voltage. So definitely, as the voltage reduce, the current which can draw by this winding will be reduced. Let's say if it is the case, uh, the 30 ampere supply is taken by the delta or one winding, let's say this winding is consuming this 30 ampere divided into two path because it's parallel path and if let's say this coil is getting 17.3 ampere with compared to this your star connection consumes only 10 ampere 10 ampere so which means that is about one third less one third less the current in delta configuration. So once the motor start with the star, then we are going to change back over to delta configuration, right? Okay, we, this can be done by manually, but mostly we are doing this change over in automatic uh, using contactors, right? So this is the basic arrangement how that we have to carry out. So this is how that windings, uh, star connection, W2, U2, and V2 has to connect together and U1, V1, W1 connected to supply. In delta connection, U1, W2, V1, W2 and W1, V2 that uh, we have to connect in this way. So how these connections are achieved? There is a contactor to make this one. We call it this K2 contactor. That is star contactor. And this K3 contactor, it makes the connection in this way. We call it as delta contactor. The K1 is the main contactor, right? Okay, this is the motor, the terminal box, and terminal thermal overload relays OCRs are provided. Let's see how the circuit works, right? Working. Uh, you can see this is the power circuit. As I shown uh, uh, shown you before, this one has main contactor and delta contactor, and this is star contactor, right? And this is over current relay. So how does this circuit work? Same way, this is power circuit and your control circuit is supplied with two phase, let's say live and neutral 220 volts. Uh, then there is a fuse for the protection and stop button, normal close. So power comes up to here. Unless you press start button, power won't flow anywhere. Once you press the start button, okay, power comes here. KT1, the timer relay will be activated. There will be timer relay, okay? This timer relay starts to count. One, two, three, four, five, like that. The same time, power comes here, okay? This is normal close because the timer is still not activated. So, this is close. And KM2, KM2, yes, still we do not have power here. This one is in activated or close condition. So, the, the supply comes here. And KM1 will energize. KM1, okay. This one energizes, right? Which means your, uh, sorry, star contactor will energize. At the same time, what happens? Still the current comes here, but this one, K1T timer, at is, as it is normal open, now it's still it is counting. So this one does not 
close contact so current or uh, current will not pass here then it will we can go to next path okay there are two branches as the km1 energizes its auxiliary contact this contact will uh, activate activate so then what happens the current will starts coming this way and km3 activates let's see km3 activates so the km3 activated and km1 activated so the sub the circuit is completed in this path so the motor starts to turn uh, in star configuration now what happens don't forget now this timer relay was energized and it start count down right let's say it is three seconds four seconds after three four seconds what happens as as its time elapsed then then normal close contact become open normal open contact this timer contacts with this will become closed so km1 km1 will be de-energized this one will be de-energized and as that one de-energizes this one also opens so the your km3 also may be uh, no km3 will not be energized because as previous time when this km1 was activated the km3 was activated that's why motor was running the same time there was a holding contact so km3 can maintain try to maintain in uh, close condition or activate condition as this one opens sorry and uh, this one make close contact then km2 will activate it km2 means your delta uh, contactor will activate it km3 and km2 uh, run together which means then the motor will con continue to run as uh, delta motor connection right so this is how it's uh, the star delta connection works so initially star connection voltage is reduced so the current reduce and thereafter some seconds depending on the timer relay setting then it will change over to star so the what is the disadvantage of such system as this is voltage reduced starting method the starting torque also less that is a disadvantage and the other thing there will be a effect we call there will be an effect we call open transition effect what is open transition effect what is open transition effect where you see this star contactor and delta contactor there is an interlock between these two if this one catches this one release if this one catches this one release so they are interlocked they will never catch together otherwise it will dead short so uh, there is an interlock this km1 km2 contact and km1 contact these contacts are the interlocking whenever this one energize this one will never energize whenever this one energize this one will never get energized because this will become open right so there will be time period momentarily that your motor uh, will uh, not powered during that time what happens as you know the the theory of this uh, what we call back emf whenever you supply ac power and then you remove that power what happens there will be back power from the motor motor will act as a generator moment so in that case the motor will try to power back uh, to the system what is the disadvantage and next time once uh, this one happens and start to connect the delta contactor the this side also have voltage and this side also have voltage and these two voltages are not synchronized they are out of phase let's say the top one is in let's say this top one behaves in this and the bottom wave pattern we do not know and maybe if it is lagging or leading then what happens there will be a voltage difference what we call then each contactor will subject to a large current surge and arc effect arcing effect right so these contacts most vulnerable to damage so this open transmission is there there is a moment recovery loss and uh, the motor acts as a generator and giving a back emf and uh, we cannot synchronize these two contacts and uh, anyway the contactor will try to close the breaker that time heavy spark will take place that we call the open transition 
effects i hope guys that that is clear that uh, star delta motor starters and let's move to auto transformer starters okay, what is auto transformer simply this is normal your transformer it has a primary as well as secondary right but in auto transformer you do not have these two separate windings only one single winding having different different tappings let's say this is primary and this will be secondary and it's uh, if you see the schematic diagram this is like that your primary side if you provide it 220 you can have 12 volt 60 volt 120 175 220 even stepping up like 210 volts right so this is how the auto transformer it is very simple construction right and this auto transformer you now as you can see it is uh, effectively voltage you can reduce this is coming with like a uh, tap percentage normally you will get uh, 40 percent uh, 50 percent and 60 percent or 75 percent that depends uh, three or four tap settings will be uh, there tap settings will be there sorry okay so then let's see how you can use this okay this is auto transformer starting method the motor is there ocr there will be three contacts same like your star delta configuration km2 main contact and km3 also km1 like a auto transformer uh, connection like a star point right and how that voltage reduce if someone wants he can directly power the motor so that KM2 has to energize, KM3 has to de-energize. KM3 and KM1 you can keep de-energized. So then DOL, it will act as a DOL. So but it will draw huge current. What you have to do, before opening KM2, you can make the current path to start KM1 and KM3. Then the voltage will come start to, the current will start to flow in this direction and the motor is supplied through this tapping let's say as per this case if you say 50 percent tapping so the voltage apparently will be half of its supply voltage and the current will be that much less and uh, different different tap settings are there different different application you can go for 40 you can go for 60 percent tap so then the voltage is that much percentage reduced right and once the motor uh, started picked up its uh, starting uh, uh, overcome its starting inertia at that time uh, we can remove this came open came three came one and we can continue with came two direct online start so this is the circuit let's say how it works this is the control circuit okay f1 is a fuse s2 let's say it's a stop switch because it's normal close and s1 is the start switch when the sun is pressed, what happens? The supply comes up to K1, that is a timer relay like star delta. So this is timer relay, the symbol is there. And uh, <coughs> this one is the timer. And the, the current, okay, we cannot go here because it's open. And here it is, timer relay, it is normal close. And KM2 also not de-energized. So in this case, no, this one also close. KM1 start to energize. Okay, KM1 energize. This one energize, right? Okay, we'll, let's take a, put a tick, right? As KM1 energize, what happens then? This contacts close and then KM3 energize. Motor starts under low voltage. Now, as it spin and your countdown timer start to count, let's say it's time elapsed in that case this contact will open de-energize game one de-energize game three and then it energize this path and game one okay now it will become to normal close this condition and game two will be energized then the motor will start to run like this uh, direct supply right so this is your auto transformer starting this one also vo reduce voltage starting method right so the auto transformer using a step down auto transformer uh, this is also reduce voltage uh, to reduce the current 
it's a cheaper one not unlike the normal uh, double wound transformer and it's light uh, in weight uh, that is uh, that is used for a very short time same like star connection uh, in star delta configuration so for induction motor starting the torque transformer is a three phase unit and because of expense this method is only used with large motor drives example electric cargo pumps and sometimes the steering gear motors also because uh, these steering gear motors has to start with the uh, emergency generator in that case they can use a start uh, auto transform and also if emergency are compressed is there and sometimes you can find auto transformers there the problem is this timer relay is very very important because if this timer relay uh, gives a gives trouble then the motor may continue to run on uh, auto transformer and eventually the transformer will burn right and the last one is soft start soft starter is using thyristors this is the motor and there are back to back connected three sets of thyristor for three phase supply this is and there is a bypass contactor or direct online contactor like uh, the direct supply contactor and there is a control circuit with the transformers and microcontrollers which controls the thyristor firing or thyristor triggering i will be doing a separate session regarding thyristor voltage regulation and uh, there i'll be detail discuss how that voltage reduction can be achieved by thyristors but for the time being this one is also reduce voltage starter and how it achieves if i simply explain it to you like that let's say this thyristor uh, single phase block there were three thyristors one sets of thyristors six thyristors three sets 1 2 3 okay let's consider one set let's say this one supply with v in this kind of sinusoidal wave and thyristor is a special device where it has to forward bias but it will never conduct unless you supply its gate if you trigger its gate it will continues to pass the current unless its current fall below a value we called holding current let's or, or otherwise we can say if the sinusoidal wave form now it start to conduct let's say and whenever it starts to crossing zero point that thyristor conduction will start stop this ecr conduction will stop so we call that phenomena is natural commutation switching off process we call commutation in ac circuit as the supply current or the voltage crosses the zero that time uh, the the current across the thyristor fall below the holding current and that time it stop the conduction will stop the conduction right anyway that is i will be explaining in a separate section uh, so far what we can see okay let's say there are two back to back thyristor this is for the positive half cycle and this one is for negative half cycle and vg1 whenever the the thyristor okay this is the output thyristor output right out there won't be any voltage up to this point because it will not you will never you you do not have a trigger signal in this region where you are going to trigger or the gate signal that you are going to supply at here this pulse so the thyristor start to conduct from this point from this point and it will stop at this point because natural commutation takes place as the current crosses the zero then again the thyristor will stop conduction because it is reverse bias but this thyristor will come into action still this thyristor will not conduct anything up to here because it also must receive a gate signal this is the gate signal whenever it receives the gate signal it starts to conduct the current and again it will stop as the supply current passes zero so in this way this cycle repeats and what you have to do is you have to advance the triggering point with respect to your input sine wave so whenever uh, taking its much much advance or closer uh, with the uh, supply that you can see here it is almost conducting full sinusoidal wave as it receives so which means 
if you see the average voltage, starting voltage is less at this point, voltage is less and then gradually the voltage increases. So this is the way how you are achieving soft start. Okay, for today, I think it's a very lengthy video, so I'm going to stop here. And next day, uh, I'll be discussing about um, synchronous motors. Synchronous motors. Uh, so you can comment or you can uh, text me anything if you want to get any clarification. I hope that you will enjoy this video and uh, see you on next video. Thank you.